Hey, happy May 16th, 2020. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut, and we head to the baseball route. Right-handed pitcher, formerly of East Hartford, because he graduates, or supposedly graduates <laughs> soon, but he'll be going to LaSalle, we hope, in the fall. His name is Joey Magnano. Joey, thanks so much for being able to come on today. No problem, Chris. Thanks for having me. Joey, I think, you know, first off, because you are a senior, I want to ask mm-hmm. you, how did you, you know, how are you dealing with this quarantine? Because I'm sure for you, you were not able to pitch your senior year. It had to be yeah. tough. Yeah, no, that's tough. That, that was probably the, that took me, remember um, when I found out it was pitcher catcher week. So we had our first meeting and uh, coach sat us down. That was one of the first things he told us that he doesn't even know if we're going to have our season. So that's when it really hit me. And I just like, I couldn't even, I, I didn't know what I was going to do without like my senior night. And that was my first thought. And so it was tough, but. Um, I'm just kind of, you know, still home workouts and keep that tunnel vision because I'm, I'm blessed and thankful that I got the opportunity to play with Cell. So keeping that tunnel vision, just getting ready for fall, was, hopefully for summer. Was there anything in particular that, you know, when you found out, was it anger? Was it frustration? Was it sadness? Or was it like a combination of all those kind of bundled into one? It was definitely a combination. It was just like a I couldn't even describe it to you. It was like, it's like, like all off season, you, know, you work so hard for this season and then for mm-hmm. it to be taken. And then on top of that, it's like, you can't even do anything to stop that. So not only is it taken, so now we, we, we learned that the season was done and then speculations, it was like, Oh, we might have the season. We might not. And then it got pushed from April 28th and then it got pushed to like May 20th and then it canceled. So it was just that kind of like anxiety. You never know if we're going to have it or not. How many seniors are on the roster? Um, we had, uh, okay, so it was me, Austin Segura, Justin Carmark, Luis Garcia, um, uh, well, um, Garrett <laughs> Allen, five, I think I'm, I'm thinking about six, I'm thinking about six, five or six seniors we had. Okay, so for the six mm. seniors, do you, you know, are you still keeping in contact with all of them? Yeah, I keep in contact, yeah. Because I was going to say, because especially in a time like this, knowing that you know, I don't know how many of them are going to play college baseball. Mm, you yeah. sell, you know, you, you know yourself. You're going to go play at LaSalle. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. So, mm. but not being able to play potentially for the last time with the guys that you kind of came through high school with, that's yeah. sad, man. Yeah, no, that that was that was tough. It was like, and we didn't even, you know, once once we learned the season was done, like that's when that that, that was like the weekend where everything, like school, got shut down, everything. So we didn't even get to like say goodbye. Nothing. It was just. Like, you know, in FaceTime and real, like, face-to-face is not the mm-hmm. same role. So we didn't even get to get, like, a formal goodbye. Nothing. It was, it was tough. Hopefully, you know, something could happen with the baseball program at East Hartford mm-hmm. maybe next year when schools hopefully open back up and maybe yeah. the head coach can have you come down, just, you know, the seniors. Just something to kind of, mm-hmm. you know, I know it's going to be, you know, potentially a year plus away. But, yeah. I, you know, something to be able to at least bring you guys back and say, hey, let's, let's yeah. finish it off right, at least you guys together, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, no, that'd be great, yeah. That definitely be something cool. You know what? Let's talk a little bit about your career at East Hartford. Kind of reflect to me on the last three years, three full seasons yeah. that you had with East Hartford, because I'm sure there's some moments that kind of really jump out to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know for sure. So coming in, I was really like a like a I was a chunky kid. Like I didn't really know what I was going to play. Like uh, in middle school, I didn't make the sixth grade team or the seventh grade team. Made it in eighth grade, and I played third base there. And then so freshman year tryouts came. And I was trying out for third base, and um, I get in the batting cage, and coach, uh, he says, two letters, P.O. So from that day on, I was a pitcher. Um, so I was a pitcher for three years. Um, I played JV and varsity my freshman year, um, and then varsity my junior, and I mean my uh, sophomore and junior. Interesting, interesting. So mm-hmm. you didn't make the sixth or seventh grade team, is that what you said? No. Okay, yeah. so then, and then your coach saw you hit, and he said mm-hmm. that you were only a pitcher only. Yeah. So your hitting must have been that bad. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. I was a former pitcher in college. Mm-hmm. I was told well before college, stop hitting. Yep. I mean, you could hit, but it's going to be like 50 miles exit velocity off the bat. Just focus yep. on pitching. Trust mm-hmm. me. You're not the yep. only pitcher. I mean, look at major league dudes. They look even mm-hmm. worse. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But, mm-hmm. you know, looking at that, you know, from a macro sense – were you happy to be just a pitcher, or did you miss the hitting aspect? Oh, no, 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 100%. Yeah, uh, and, and especially now in hindsight, it was like a blessing in disguise. Like I definitely wanted to just focus on pitching. Um, 
there really is no downside. You know, once you're done pitching, like you're on your rest days. There's no hitting. There's no like you're just done. Mm. So that's that's a life. So were you able to kind of figure out early on how to get yourself in a routine of okay? Because I'm sure you pitched every what five days. Were you like a Tuesday guy, yeah. Wednesday guy? Yeah. Okay. Different early, but yeah, five days. So were you able to kind of find a routine, a regimen to kind of get yourself prepared for your next start? Yeah, hundred percent. And coming in as a freshman, like once I like once I took on that role, of, like being just a pitcher. Once I took on that role, I was uh, there's a lot of guys there that were really good. Um, our ace that year, Mark, and then our number two, Alessio, they really helped me a lot. And, like, I followed them and learned their routines and kind of took pieces from them and made my own. And Yeah, definitely got a – that's important too, definitely getting a routine. What did they specifically help you with? Was it the mental side or was it kind of the physical side? Because, like you said, you came in a chunky chunk, so you had to yeah, lose some of the yeah. weight. Was it that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, it was both. It was, like, I had to, like, get into, like, a whole stretching routine, definitely, like, a workout routine, like, running after you pitch. They all helped me with that. It was, like – very tedious. I mean, hey, it worked out. Got you looked at yeah. by LaSalle, man. You know, yeah. and mm-hmm. right, again, right before we get into that, and Joey, I appreciate you being able to come on. I really do appreciate Jennifer, it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Hey, anytime mm-hmm. I can get a pitcher on, as a fellow mm-hmm. pitcher, former pitcher, yep. got to have you on. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about your mechanics, because I've been able to watch a little bit of video, and mm-hmm. you're a tall kid. You're straight over the top from, again, the video, but it looks mm-hmm. like it's very, uh, it's effortless. It doesn't look yeah. like you kind of put any strenuous on your arm. Yeah, it's t- it's it's hard, especially like especially you know like pitching mechanics. It's all like a science. It's very tedious. So mm-hmm. guys like Chris Sale, like three quarters, and like Max Scherzer, especially almost sidearm. So over the top, I feel like that's like I can most deviate hitters. Like so, if I'm going to curve ball over the top, or like just keeping that consistent like arm path. So one thing I did notice too, because you throw over the top, it's that mm-hmm. you don't again. I wasn't able to see video from if I was facing north, you know, basically seeing you straight on. But it looks like you hide the ball well. And by hiding the ball well and the hitter's not being able to pick up on it until you're at the firing position, they're not able to kind of figure out, oh, this is a curveball, this is a fastball. Yeah. And I think that's good, especially for a pitcher as big as you are. Yeah, and I think, like, especially in the game, like, trying to, like, just find any little thing to throw to take that advantage. And especially when I'm on the mound, like, I'll glib on my eye, like, Wiggle my glove a little bit, throw them off, so little things like that, yeah. Now, when you throw over the top, because I know as, you know, I've talked to a lot of pitchers throughout my career as a broadcaster, and some of them have told me when they throw over the top, sometimes they have a tendency to get underneath the baseball, and if they're throwing mm-hmm. a fastball or if they're throwing a curveball, if they get underneath it, it kind of just goes either up or it stays flat like a curveball and it becomes more of like a mediocre slider. Is that the same for mm-hmm. you? Um, no, not necessarily. Like, a lot of my coaches definitely preach, like, um, getting on top of the ball. And if you're going to miss, miss down. That's the best thing to miss down. Okay. So that's how I try to, like, use my fingertips and I purposely, like, push down. I'd rather miss down and throw a dirt ball than throw and miss up. And... <sighs> yeah, up if you not, miss up, no. you're not getting another yeah. baseball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, what kind of pitches do you throw? Uh, fastball, curveball, changeup, and two-seam. Okay, which one would you say is your best pitch and which one would you say is the not not so good pitch? Um, I'm pretty confident in all my pitches. So I would say my best pitch is my two seam, and I would say like, like I said, I'm confident in all mine. But I guess I don't know. Um, maybe work on my changeup a little bit more. But I was gonna say, if you go to college, you're gonna need a changeup, mm-hmm. man. I mean, yeah, they definitely. Can, even at Division three, they can hit mm-hmm. the fastball. It's the yeah. changeup that could be the separator. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. Like they're there for a reason. They're playing there for a reason. So. And speaking of college, let's talk about LaSalle. <clears throat> what made you go there? What was the decision process when you were <clears throat> looking at colleges? Uh, I always told my mom, like, the first the first school to recruit me, whatever, I'm, I'm going to take it. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially, you know, that's a little, you're not supposed to think like that, but that just kind of worked out like that. Because um, I always told her, like, that was the first school that would always, that recognized my potential. And it just happened that LaSalle was the first school and had my major. Um, I was in Boston. <clears throat> I love the campus and everything. I love the coach. He sat me down and laid everything out. Um, he told me he wanted to be a winner and like stuff like that. And I just I agreed with that. That's what I want. So everything is fit and I like it there. So And LaSalle, because I was able to see them against Trinity earlier, you know, <clears throat> before the season was eventually canceled because of the coronavirus. Um, they don't have a lot of pitching. They didn't have a lot of pitching. So <clears throat> for yourself as a freshman, you could be jumping in at a prime spot because depending on how many pitchers are coming in, which I mean I don't know how many. But for you, that's got to be a positive because it's like, hey, 
if I show my worth in the fall, I could earn myself maybe a, a number three, a number four spot. I could potentially be even higher if I really, you know, improve. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep. And that was another factor in me going. I like I want, wanted to play in somewhere where I could have a shot. Now, are you still in contact yep. with the coach? Uh yeah. Yeah, we were text recently. Yep. How's the conversations been as far as I'm sure he's just keeping up? Like, hey, how you doing? How you yeah. doing with the virus? Are you keeping up with mm-hmm. your workouts? What's the conversation? Yeah, like? he uh yeah. So we're just like keeping in contact, making sure we're all safe and stuff. And he uh, sent me the uh, workout schedule for the fall, and mm-hmm. we just you know he's being, he's being very lean, you know like. As long as you're able to go to the gym, go ahead. But if you're not, like, stay safe. Make sure, you know, health first. Get to the gym when you can. Is there anything in particular that he's he wants you to work on as far as when you come into the fall? Um, not specifically. We didn't address specifically for me okay. yet. But it was um, we for the whole, like, pitching group, he uh, really emphasized, like, a routine. Like, they have, like, a structured routine. So, mm-hmm. like, they're on, like, pitching routine. So that's one of the things that – Stood out to me. As a pitcher, was there anything that he wanted you to work on as far as maybe pitch selection? Uh, maybe it's a certain pitch like the changeup or maybe a mm. pitch that you haven't really – I know you said you have confidence in all four. I mm. Trust me, I had confidence mm. in all my pitches, but yeah, not all of them yeah, worked. I knew. Mm. <laughs> so is there maybe a pitch that he wants you to focus, maybe become – because you throw over the top, be more mm. of a two-seam, two-seam slider or two-seam curve depending on mm. whatever is more comfortable for you? Yeah, it's an interesting point you bring that up, but we didn't have that conversation yet. We uh we haven't talked about that yet. We haven't been in too depth about like personalized uh-huh. what we need to work on coming into the fall. Uh, yeah, to the fall. But uh, it's interesting you bring that up though. See, because the pitching coach, I'm like, yeah, the pitching coach. When I went to my visit, we did. That was something that was talked about. See, I'm a former pitching coach because mm-hmm. I was the uh, senior legion pitching coach in Naugatuck some years uh, ago. Okay, yeah. So always thinking one step ahead. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. Now, Joey, again, I really do appreciate you coming on. One more question for you. For any, you know, any senior underclassman who's watching this and will be watching this on YouTube, what would you want to tell them about their next season, which could, you know, be their senior season, their junior senior, uh, uh, jun- uh, junior season, knowing that what happened with you? What advice do you have for them? Um, well, for one, definitely enjoy all your seasons you have right now. So every season you get to play and you're lucky to have, definitely take advantage of it and enjoy it. Um, and definitely just being the now, don't worry about too much. Like, I think that was one of my biggest downfalls, like coming up, like I was worried about who's coaching here, what coach is watching me. Um, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? Did he see this? Did he see that? I was just too caught up in it. But then once I just like played and I just didn't worry about anything, I just, you know, focused on a tunnel vision, like everything's going to be all right. Just put the work in, everything's going to fall into place. Once I got that down and just stayed calm and deep breaths, like get into a routine, just becoming that like next level. Like. You know, the work came through, man. You got, you, you know, you're going Thank to LaSalle, you. you're going to play baseball there. You know, appreciate it. It's, it sucks what happened with everything as far as your senior season, but at least you were able to find a school that has your major and you're able to play mm-hmm. baseball for the next four years and hopefully – you can continue your success from East Hartford to LaSalle. So congratulations yeah. to you, Joey. Thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate it. But you know what? We ran out of time here. But once mm. again, it was a pleasure to be able to have you on. You're welcome to come back on anytime. Not a problem. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Stay safe. That'll wrap things up here in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day, everybody.